Hello guys, welcome to another video and in this video I'm going to be reviewing this radio here, the TYT UV 8000E which was sent to me for this review by Radiodity.com This is a dual band FM radio which covers VHF and UHF but that's pretty common, so what makes this radio stand out from the crowd? The unique selling point of this radio is that it does 10 watts output power most of the other radios of this size have an output power of around 5 watts, so this radio is about double that. The radio can also act as a crossband repeater, which I'll be talking more about later. So let's have a look at what you get in the box with this radio. Obviously you get the radio body with the nice large 3600 milliamp hour battery pack. So it should last you quite a long time. Uh, the belt clip comes separately and it comes with this really long antenna which should allow you to get a really good range. It also comes with a shorter antenna which is a more standard kind of length in case you don't want a massive antenna on your on your waist if you want to carry it on a belt clip. Uh, you get the charger as usual with this type of radio. So that just slots into there like that and it just charges with the wall adapter here. But you also get a car adapter, so that goes into your car and this end of the plug goes into the back of here. You get the programming cable as well and it also comes with a CD with the software on. But I actually found it easier to just find the software online because there's loads of files on that CD and it's not always that easy to tell which one it is. And you also get the manual here, which is not really written in the best of English, but it's not too difficult to understand either. Now, if we look at the body of the radio in a bit more detail, on the top you've got the channel selector knob, 11, 10, 9. and it announces the channel number that you're on. This channel selector knob doesn't have any numbers on it, and you can just spin it around for as long as you like which is quite useful for going through the menus because you can keep going through all the options like this and you can go a lot faster than you could do by using the arrow keys another good thing about this radio is the two lines on the display which mean that you can display either two channels at the same time and you can monitor both of them for activity at the same time or you can display two frequencies at the same time if you have it in VFO mode like so. On the left side of the radio you've got the push to talk button as every walkie talkie does um, a monitor button which opens up the squelch like so there's also the orange button here which is the emergency button and if you hold that in, in normal, when, when the radio is not in the menu, then you will produce a 1750 hertz tone, which can be used to open up some of the older amateur repeaters. But if you go into the menu Function. and then press it, Emergency call. it does that annoying siren noise which um, might be useful in some instances if you want to alert someone else on the channel that you're trying to call them but for most people it will probably have no use the radio also has a broadcast FM mode so function. if you press function and then monitor FM. Fifth Symphony. so Dutier first, a piece commissioned by Mr. Slav you can listen into normal broadcast FM. FM stations at the same time as the radio monitors the channels on here. So if any activity comes up on either of these channels, then it will switch back to these channels so you can still listen into this. And then it will resume the FM or the broadcast FM station once the transmission on either of these channels is over. This radio also has a Kenwood style two pin connector which means that accessories are widely available for it and you can find accessories to suit this radio on radioaddity.com 
have a look in the description for a link to the website. You can program this radio either using the computer programming software, which is available for free, or you can do it directly from the radio. Now if you press this button down in the bottom right corner here, you go into frequency mode. So let's say I wanted to program in a frequency on this radio uh, from the BFO mode into a channel. I can select plus, plus. the frequency either plus, by plus, plus, going plus, plus. through frequencies with the channel selector knob plus, on top plus, plus. or I can key it in directly on the keypad here and once I've found the frequency that I want to add plus. let's just say 145 decimal 100 function. you go into function then press this button down here again store channel store channel okay and the number up here, this number here, the 09 that's flashing, tells you which channel number it's going to be stored in and you can change that by using the channel selector knob and once it stops flashing that means you found an empty channel to store it in. So just keep going up until you find an empty channel. So here 24 is empty. If I press function Four. again that channel is now stored in 24. If I press this button down here, 24. I'll go back to channel mode and you can see that that channel is stored there in 24. Function. Now you can also go into the menu Scan. Scan. and you can Scan. rename it Scan. Step. Shift. Shift. as well as Up. changing Code. different options like the bandwidth and the power that's to be used on that channel as well as the CTCSS or DCS code. So here we have the channel name in the menu, it's number 28 on the menu. Enter. If I press enter I can cycle through characters and I can give this channel a name. You can also use the channel selector to scroll through the options or through the numbers and letters much faster. So let's just say I want to name the channel R for example. Enter. Now I've done that, I press enter, it's got an R, Escape. and there the channel name is showing as R. So the TYT UV8000E, who would want to buy this radio and why? Well, considering that it's slightly more expensive than other dual band radios, such as this Baofeng GT5TP, you would have to have some advantage of the TYT to buy it, and it does have some advantages. The crossband repeater is very good, it's very fun to play with and it's actually quite useful as well if you want to use it as a proper repeater. The high power means that this radio will be able to get into repeaters further away than other normal handhelds. Although this Baofeng here has 8 watts and this one has 10 watts, the Baofeng doesn't come with the extended antenna that the TYT does and it also doesn't feel quite as well made as the TYT. So you do get a better radio for your money when you spend more and buy this radio compared to other dual band radios out there on the market. Another thing is the 3600 milliamp hour battery in this radio which is quite large for a radio this size and will make sure that you get a lot of talk time on this radio, especially if you're using it in the low power mode. So to answer my earlier question, who would want to buy this radio? Well, it is quite obvious that this radio has been designed to allow you to transmit further than other handheld radios. So I think this radio would be good for someone who doesn't have many repeaters in range or just wants to be able to talk on repeaters further away or make long distance simplex contacts from a handheld. Alternatively, if you want to have a radio that can act as a crossband repeater, as well as having a high power output, then this is the radio for you. So if you would like to buy this radio, check the description for a link. This radio was provided to me for this review by radiodity.com. So go and check out their website if you need any radio gear or if you want to buy this radio or any accessories such as antennas or speaker mics. 
If you enjoyed this video then please click the thumbs up button and if you're not subscribed already and you want to see more videos like this then please click that subscribe button.